people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm not sure I can truly fathom what the events from today's gospel might look like if they, I were there in person. But I think it's important that we all try. I hope that you'll take a moment and join me for a bit of imagination. This isn't actually fantasy in that way we think of the word imagination, but rather an attempt at recognition of a reality that we ourselves did not witness firsthand. So, what does it look like, or feel like, or even smell like, to be standing next to the cot turned burning, carrying someone we love as Jesus walks into view? Does our heart well up with hope? Do we steal ourselves for another disappointment? How long have we been waiting? Are our feet tired? Is the place overly crowded? Is it hot? What are we actually hoping for? This teacher named Jesus is said to have healed so many. What's actually happening? Here. Will this person who is sick, whom I love, but I'm literally carrying, become whole again once they meet Jesus? Who is this Jesus? Anyway. As you might have read in this week's e blast, I came to the realization recently. That I'm falling behind in one of my major goals for St. Philip's New Rector. That is, to get to know all of you personally, and for you to have the chance to know me. This problem wasn't actually altogether unexpected. It's actually easiest in the work of being a priest to focus on tasks that can be solved or worked on through one's own expertise. And I found myself drawn towards those things, the tasks around the office, meeting, emails. It takes deliberate effort to step back and focus on the mode, take a step back from the mode of getting things done, and focus instead on building something up. Most of all, I can feel how my heart wants to connect with you more, and how I'm not actually getting to that. When a church community welcomes a new priest, there's always a question about who they are, what they care about, and if they will love me in particular. It's those feelings, I think, that connect to those moments I was inviting us to imagine around Jesus in today's gospel. That tension just before Jesus heals the sick people. The questions in our hearts about if Jesus will actually do for us what he's done for us. Wondering if he can do anything at all and if these stories we heard were embellished. In those moments, before there's action, anything could be true. I'm sure there were even people in the crowd who had brought money with them, thinking they would have to pay for what Jesus would give away for you. Connection to him settles those questions, maybe not with answers, but with experiences. 
I hope also to draw your hearts to imagine the moments just after Jesus heals someone. How many happy tears, shouts of joy or shock would there have been? Would the loved ones of the sick collapse in disbelief from the effort of having carried them so far and not knowing what to do next now that the horror is over? Would they want to reach out to Jesus in thanks and happiness? I wonder what it would feel like to hug Jesus in a moment like that. I wonder how it would look to notice all those people around who had also had their kin restored to wholeness and discover they were now inside a new family. Today's Stump Director and Tuesday's Spaghetti to Know Director are just the beginning, I hope. We'll have more spaghetti dinners, and the vestry will also be working to have more structured meet and greets in the future. That was always our plan, it's just fallen away. But I want all of us to be able to make connections to each other, and for every person in this community to be able to say, at least by some experience, that they know who their priest is. I believe that it transforms our lives to be connected to each other through faith. I know that my own heart grows and yearns for more goodness when I'm here in prayer with all of you on Sunday morning. I know that it matters to me to be seeking to be forgiven, healed, empowered, and restored to hope, and not be alone. The stories about Jesus are true. Love for free. Forgiveness for all. An unyielding hope. Because God keeps God's promises to us. As we now turn our hearts and minds to an experience of Jesus here in the Eucharist in only a few moments, I hope, too, we can experience that moment after a healing to look around and see a family of faith. Those whom God loves. Those whom God has healed. Just like us. Amen. Amen. Amen.